but these are the answers. This is the answer. And it's, and it's not just the answer for Alzheimer's because I'm confident that the same diagnostic strategy intervention that you use for Alzheimer's is good for just about every other chronic degenerative disease, including cancer and heart disease. When you see people starting to get better from Alzheimer's disease, you cannot refute it. You just, mm -hmm. you see people improving their scores. You see people going back to work. You see them becoming part of their families again. You just can't refute what you see. So the, the current status, as you know, is that this is a mysterious illness. Um, it can be genetic, which is rare, and that this, this family has precinal in one mutations. Uh, and, and so the hope is that we would use specific drugs and test these drugs to see if we can prevent it. Here's the problem. APP, as we talked about earlier, is like a, like a CEO, essentially. It's looking at all the inputs uh, it's from both sides, the pro and the con, and it's deciding, are we going to be able to make more memories? Are we going to have a positive synaptic plasticity? Are we going to be synaptoblastic or are we synaptoclastic? Now, in the few families that have this, they are pushed toward the synaptoclastic side from the beginning. Mm. That is not representative of what the, the over 95% of us have. We are pushed there appropriately because we ate the wrong foods, we stayed up too late, we abused ourselves in so many ways with stress, we ate the wrong things, we were exposed to all these toxins, we, we lived a Western lifestyle, we ate the standard American diet, our hormones decreased. Those are the things that are driving our APP to produce the synaptoclastic side. The point is not to get too distressed if you come down to the signs and symptoms of Alzheimer's because there's a good chance it may not be Alzheimer's. You have to look at these other subtypes. And if you look at what changes the most between birth and death, what is senescence all about? You know, we lose some muscle mass and we lose the ability to make hormones, all these things. The argument has always been the thing that changes the most, it's five to six orders of magnitude, is mutations in, in mitochondrial DNA. That's the thing that collects the most as we age. That's where the energy is produced. That's where the, the free radicals are generated, the majority of them. So that's yeah. exactly what you'd predict. The, the, the name of the game is to preserve mitochondrial function. And one of the best ways to do that is re radically reduce or optimize free radical stress in the mitochondria. It's a huge issue. Um, and yet at the same time, as you well know, functional medicine shows you, you've got to look at this as a coordinate unit.